Alrighty, so in this video, I'm going to show you uh, again how to find the intercepts of a parabola, so where it crosses the x and y axis. But uh, the difference this time is it's not going to be a nice, simple one where you get whole numbers. So uh, if you have a look at the equation I've got here, and I'll just draw some really awesome axes once my pen starts working. There we go. Um, let's make it as big as I can possibly get. And so on. Um, and so you realize again, this is a means that the vertex is four across to the right from the origin and down two. So one, two, three, four, down two. There's our vertex. And you can see there's nothing in the front, no coefficient. So the shape has not been changed. It is just a regular parabolic shape. So that's across one from the vertex and up one in both directions and across two and up four. Back two, up four. There we are. So we get this parabolic shape, which is horribly untidy, sorry. Um, but you can see, even from my terrible drawing, that it doesn't actually cross at a nice number. We cannot really work this out accurately from our graph. It looks to be around about midway between, what's that, 2 and 3, 5 and 6. Uh, but we don't know exactly where it sits. So we are going to have to use algebra to get this more accurately. So remember, again, this is the x-axis. And every point along that line has a y-coordinate of 0. And because every point on this line obeys our rule that we started with right here, we know that if we know one of those two coordinates, now we know the y one, we can then solve this equation to work out the x coordinate. So up the top here, when I do my x intercept, I know that y is equal to zero. So I can create this equation, zero equals x minus four all squared minus two. And there are, you know, there are multiple ways of doing it. The easiest way, that, um, which I think anyway, from here, is if I just add 2 to both sides, I'm going to end up with x minus 4 all squared. Then I need to take the square root of both sides, so I'm going to end up with plus or minus the square root of 2, because remember, um, because it's a positive number, there will be two roots, and that equals x minus 4. And then obviously I just need to add 4 to both sides, so I end up with x is equal to either positive root 2 plus 4 or negative root 2 plus 4 and I know they're not very nice but you know if you want to evaluate you can that's 1.414 so that's going to be 5.414 and that's something else <laughs> which I'm not going to do right now in my head but you could evaluate them if you want but to be perfectly honest um, that's a waste of your time um, if, unless you've got a really good reason for getting that number um, it's fine to leave them in served form like so. I'd be completely happy with that. So uh, that's how I could work out that x-intercept. Now similarly to find the y-intercept, we do know that along our y-axis here, we know every coordinate has an x value of 0. So all we need to do is come to our rule again, and this time replace the x with the 0, leaving us with only one unknown, the y. And we can just say, well, therefore y must be equal to, that's negative 4 squared minus 2. Now negative 4 squared is 16. Take away 2, which gives us 14. So way up there somewhere on our y-axis uh, is where this crosses uh, the axis. So there you have it. It doesn't have to be a nice answer. Um, it is absolutely okay to get things like that. But remember the basics here that we're trying to focus on is that if you are trying to find intercepts, you need to be very aware of these things where along each axis, the other coordinate will be equal to zero. And we can use that knowledge, substitute it into our, our rule, which I've circled here again. And then we can solve whatever equation we're left with to find those intercepts. Okay, I hope that helped.